Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Nigel here, Nigel's Modeling Bench, and I'm here with another kit review for you. Um, this is a kit that when it came out, as soon as I heard about it, I thought that's what I want. So I knew that I'd be getting one as soon as it became available. So um, here it is. This is the brand new kit from a brand new company called Mini Base. And it is available from Premium Hobbies, as you can see here. And it's the SU-33 Flanker D Russian Navy, Karen born, Navy Carrier Born Fighter. And it's a 48 scale, series number 01. It's their first kit and, and only kit, I believe. Fuselage length 457 millimeters, wingspan is 306 millimeters, height is 123 millimeters, and there's 670 pieces. And believe me, this is not like a lot of the kits where you see, you know, 670 pieces and 370 pieces of that is um, armament. It's not like that at all. Um, so first of all, a little bit about the SU-33, it's actually not SU, it's SU-33, we always make the mistake in the Western world, we say SU-33, it should be SU-33, like it's 224, we, we say TU, it's actually 2, um, you know, we don't say MIG, do we, we say MIG, so it's 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 SU-33, um, it's, it's basically a carrier-based version of the SU-27, and was originally called the SU-27K, They've strengthened up the undercarriage and it's got a much strength, stronger fuselage area, obviously for the for the extra loads of landing on, a, on an aircraft carrier. Um, for example, one of the big problems with the um, carrier borne F-35 was the uh, undercarriage would, would break on heavy landings, especially if they were coming in vertically and the ship would come up to meet the aircraft, bang, and it would, it would um, damage the undercarriage. So they had to put stronger undercarriage on it. Uh, obviously, it's also got folding wings and folding stabilizers to get more storage space in the hangar decks. Um, also, the 33 has got these canards and it's got a larger wing area. And also, I read somewhere it's got a double flap system, so um, which is over the um, over the 27. And it's also it says I've also read it's got a twin front wheel, but I thought the 27 had a twin front wheel as well. But hey. Um, it also has upgraded engines and a, and a better fly-by-wire system. Uh, from what the details I could find out, there are roughly 19 in service in 2009. Um, and then in 2016, there were six. And they were actually um, sort of refitted and used in Syria. Um, the Chinese wanted to order some and buy them. But in the end, they that deal fell through because they... They bought a, um, a prototype of the aircraft from Ukraine and were trying to reverse engineer it as the, as we all know. The, yeah, so um, basically that all fell through. So the Chinese never got their hands on these. Um, and the aircraft carrier this went from, this is from the 279th Shipborne Fighter Aviation Regiment, was from Admiral Kuchnetsov. Uh, which is the only Russian aircraft carrier which is currently out of service. Well, it's actually being um, refitted, according to the uh, sources I've got. Uh, so these don't actually have a carrier to fly from at the moment. So whether they're actually still in service or not, I don't know. But uh, enough about the real thing. Let's have a look at the model. So this is the box front, and it's um, it's beautiful, and it's not really glossy, so you don't get glared out. So I'll just read you what it says on here. Highly detailed static display model. Gracious SU-30... Gracious Su-33 shape is stunningly reproduced, accurately capturing the characteristics of the Su-33. Uh, ASAL-31F engine nozzles, vertical stabiliser stiffener plates and air brake, the cockpit landing gear and landing gear bay are designed with all the details. Complex wing folding mechanism is completely reproduced. Leading edge flap and the double slot tra trailing edge flap have optional installation angles and wing tip ailerons are movable. Uh, with richly updated pylons and missiles with three marking options. So obviously we've got three marking options, but they're all from the 279th. Um, and I think we've got 80, 86 and 68, I think it is. So um, there we go. So quick note, I haven't looked in this box yet. So it's a, it's a surprise for me like it is for you. So have a look around the box. And here we've got the um, side on image of the 279th. This is um, red 80. So I'm assuming Brot is Russian for red. Um, and then we've got some R-73s here. We've got some R-27s. We've got E-T, E-R, T and R. And then we've got Shor 
Absorbsia uh, L004 005 ECM pod set. Got a little bit about history about the aircraft there if you want to pause and have a read of that. Uh, and then we've got some cautions down here about no pilots and stuff. This is the company here, Mini Base. Never heard of them. Interesting that the the logo looks a little bit similar to when Trumpeter first started. They were called um, Mini Model or something, weren't they? Or Mini Craft or Mini Hobby. Um, so yeah, very interesting, but more on that later. Uh, I have actually seen a review of this done by Bear yesterday. And uh, yeah, fell in love with the model. Really, really like it. Um, here's the first actually review I'd seen of the model. So it's telling us here about more features about the aircraft. And it's item number 8001. Um, so yeah, I do know a little bit about the kit. But as I say, I haven't looked in here yet. So this one's a Red 68. And then we've got here our colour callouts. And they're all in Mr. Colour. So these are all the... I'm just trying to see, are these the Mr. Colour or are these aqueous? Okay, so I've got two paints here. So this is our, the, what we're all used to, that's the most common Mr. Hobby paint we use. And this is the water-based acrylic, uh, known as the aqueous. So you can see here, H85 is sail colour. And if we look down here, we can see 45 is sail. That's because they're calling out Mr. Colour. So it's the same manufacturer, but you can see the difference is Mr. Colour. And this is 135. 135 here Russian green one this is Russian green one so these are a uh, like a solvent based paint they're a lacquer paint and these are a water based paint you can actually thin these with water and use them but these need to be thinned with the uh, Mr. Color leveling thinners or your Tamiya lacquer thinners or whatever so you know you need to observe health and safety options with all these paints but with these far more so than those so um there we go that's the uh, so these are all the Mr. Colors so don't be confused if you're looking at your Mr. Hobby paints that are regularly stocked. They're the Mr. Hobby acrylics, uh, aqueous paints. These are actually the um, all the um, solvent paints. So, but it's easy to cross-reference them. And also they've kindly given us some FS numbers here, uh, 35327, which is that light grey colour, uh, 33531. Um, I also remember from seeing um, Bear's um, review of this kit, there's there's some mixing to do as well. But you can also go for, if you want to, I have actually got this set here, which I have had for years, and you can see it's quite dusty. <laughs> These are the Acan paints. Um, they're actually Russian paints. And this is the set 47326, and it's for Russian deck aviation. And, when you, and it actually says there, Su-33. So when you turn it over, you can see here, we have the aircraft of Su-33. The only thing that bothers me is they have here a different camouflage scheme. So I'm not sure if this is correct or if this is correct. So I have to do some research, but it looks like the colors are good. The colors are all there, but um, they've got basically Russian on one side and then they've got the English on the other. And a lot of them come pretty faded as well, which is a nice touch. So um, so that's that. So that's, as I say, that's ACAN 47326 if you want to get these paints. They're acrylic, I believe. Never tried them. Let me know in the comments what you think of them if you've tried them. Um, but uh, I hear they're okay. Um, I've got a few little single ones there as well. So interesting to see. Anyway, more about this kit. And then we've got some um, CAD images here, which is which is a nice touch. And then again, more from Mini Base. And then on the end of the box, we've got um, some basic information about the kit. So. I notice as well on this box I've got a, a damage in it. It's got a rip here. It looks like a sprue has actually stuck its head through the box. So, as I say, this kit is available from Premium Hobbies. Um, it's currently on the website at ninety four ninety five, which is five pounds off the retail. Um, but he's actually going to reduce it to ninety two ninety five, I believe. And that way, if you use your code NMB ten Nigel's Modeling Bench ten, you'll get ten percent off the price. And then you add to that your six pound shipping for a twenty four hour shipping. You 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 are coming in at under ninety pounds. It's actually eighty nine pounds sixty five. So um, don't forget to use your code. And then if you need some paints or anything else to go with it, you can order them at the same time, and you're basically getting free postage for your bits and pieces. Um, or you're paying six pound for your postage, but you know if if you were going to go on there and buy some glue or whatever, or some paints or brushes or sanders, then um, do it all together, and then it'll all come in one order. So well, there we go. Thank you for your order from um, from Premium Hobbies. So yeah, if you want to get this kit, 
uh, it's going to be £89.65 all in delivered to your door in mainland UK. So uh, it's not cheap, it's not a bargain, but it's cheaper than most places. Or I think it's cheaper than everyone actually. Um, but what I'm saying is the kit actually isn't cheap. Kits these days aren't, so that's the way it is unfortunately. So here we go, we've got this cardboard inlay here and we've got 68 and 80 on here. Um, this is with everything folded up, the tail cone folded up, air brake up. You can see we've got these lovely red interior panels on there, which is uh, which always makes these things pop. And these things are huge um, in comparison to like your F15s and stuff. These kits, these th these planes are massive, and we've got a fantastic bit of artwork there. That's great. Look at that. I hadn't seen that before. Um, that's worthy of a frame, I think. It's a shame it's got these indentations in it, but uh, yeah, really really nice. That's um, that's pretty cool. <laughs> That could be me up there with the airbrush, although he's got hair. So there we are. Okay, so there we go inside the box, and here we've got some what looks to be absolutely beautiful packaging, and it looks like what's been coming through is this brew here, the clear sprue. So uh, yeah, but it's not damaged at all by the look of things. So we've got a clear sprue there. We've got a bag of we've got some bloody absolutely mentally fine parts here. There's a couple of sprues there. This is going to be one of those kits that won't go back in together. And then we've got this cardboard here, which is protecting that sprue there. Which is a nice touch. Another bag of sprues there. And then there's this one here with the actual intakes. Oh, wow. Which you see all this one is out of the bags. More bits and pieces there. And looking at this, I'm thinking straight away, I'm thinking Bronco, Great War Hobby. Mm. Yeah, we've got some, um, let's see, it's a big old airplane. Lots and lots of screws, lots and lots of detail. We've got some separate boxes there. We've got some control surfaces there with absolutely stunning surface detail. Photo etch, nice to see the photo etch isn't bagged with the decals, but it's a shame they've put it on top of the decals, so it may have some damage there, but we shall see. Beautiful little pitot tube. And this is what I'm saying, guys. When you start to look at the cost and you think, oh, it's really expensive, you know, if you bought the Academy kit and then you bought some photo etch and then you bought a pitot tube and you bought some aftermarket decals, you know, it all adds up. I believe from watching Bear's uh, review of this kit, I seriously think this needs nothing. I don't think the decals are good. Um, then you know they don't need anything so we've got a really heavy book there 56 pages 56 pages in that instruction sheet of books so that's going to be something worth looking at and we've got a lovely matte a4 printed um, color call out for our camouflage so that's really nice as well. That, that would be a nice little picture to put on the wall. It's a shame it's got all these, these bits here. So there we go. So what I'm going to do is get these sprues unbagged. In fact, no, no, first of all, we'll have a look through the instructions. Um, if you wonder why I'm wearing gloves, it's because I've been doing a lot of work on the Land Rover. And as you all know, my nails are quite disgusting anyway because I bite them. And um, yeah, I've got paint and stuff in my nails and they look horrible. So I thought for this review, then I'll just put some gloves on and, and uh, make, a, make a bit more of a better look. So let me get the camera sorted and we'll have a look through this lovely instruction manual. Right, so we've got here our um, black and white printed manual. As I say, 50, 56 pages in all. So it's quite a quite a book um, for an instruction book for a 48 scale aircraft. So we've got some history of the aircraft here. We've got some health and safety here. And we've got some recommended tools here. Interestingly, they're recommending Tamiya Extra Thin Cement, uh, the quick setting version, which is a bit unusual. I do know from my experience, these are the different glues here. You've got the, again, it's a premium hobby stand. You've got the Extra Thin Cement Quick Setting and the Normal Extra Thin. Um, I actually, I'm just doing a build now, which you're going to see a video of in a, in a day or two. Um, and I've talked about the extra thin there, the quick setting there and what I use it for. It's amazing for really small parts because with the extra thin, um, you kind of put a drop on there and you put the part on and it sort of, 
it takes a while to set and it can sort of start to attack the parts if they're very tiny whereas with the quick set and it dries so fast it doesn't kind of attack anything and also it's great if you just want to push forward with your build because it dries faster so as, as the name implies um, but it is fantastic glue but it's very very hot if you if you stick something onto like if I had this box here and I stuck something on the side here and then I let it go and it stays on its own if I went in then with the extra the, with the quick setting and just touched it in the joint again it would fall off because it sort of eats itself if you like so paint call outs here again as I say all in the Mr. Colour um, lacquer paints and then I noticed down here we've got A, B, C, D and these refer to these colours here for the Russian um, colours and they're telling you how to mix them which is a nice touch and as I say I've got these colours here so I'll give these a go and we'll see what it's like um, and then we've got our legend here so the cross over there it's all very very Tamiya-esque I think hmm as I say I think this has got Great War Hobby written all over it so I just want to check here that we're in we are in frame okay so if I keep it here we're in frame right so um, ejection seat oh my god we've got a whole page on the ejection seat there's going to be two of them so um, we've got P parts in here is telling us to fold them we've got separate little parts it's uh, yeah wow <laughs> it's quite incredible lots and lots of parts we've got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten oh god there must be 30 parts there just to build up the seat and then we've got another whole page for the belts so you've got the back cushion there and you've got the belts here and everything and this is all in PE so we're getting all this in the model it's a nice touch um yeah quite incredible and then I'm assuming this here is going to be decals they've given us a star symbol there there is yeah applied I couldn't see that for looking apply decals so these are all going to be decals to go they're all stencils one on the side of the seat and then we've gone over the page and we're going to get into the cockpit so we've got some telling us all the color call outs for the cabling and harnesses and everything on the bulkhead and then we've got the instrument side consoles going in there's the bulkhead going in the back and then we've got the um, instrument panel there we've got decals for that We've got some bits and pieces going in here. I don't even know what they are. Uh, they looks like sort of arms that are acting from the rudder pedals, perhaps. And then we've got our control column here again with all the color callouts for all the different buttons and knobs. And then we've got some little bits of photo etch here going in the um, actual throttle lever, which is going in there. You've got two options: F8 and F9 for your instrument panel. So make sure you do your research. And then we've got a little PE lever going in there box going in there with some more decals on it and then we got all the uh, side panels inside the cockpit all detailed all with all the painting instructions for all the different colors for all the little bits and pieces so uh, yeah incredible interesting to see actually on this one what color the cockpit is uh, and they're telling you 392 which I think is gray 392 392 oh is it, it is the interior um soviet color so that's going to be cool it's going to look really nice so some of the uh, russian cockpits were gray weren't they so uh there we've got there all that detail going in there and then all the side panels going in here and then we're going to add all them on amazingly so we're building up a sort of um oh no sorry this is the nose gear bay that's the side panel yeah this is the no gear nose gear bay now so we've got the nose gear going together and you can see what millions of little parts going together to make up the nose gear which is incredible still more parts going on the nose gear landing lights and everything and then we've got the main gear here again loads and loads of parts to make the main gear up and then we've got our baffles there going into our intakes we've got our intakes here they're telling us to drill i'm guessing drill some holes and put these little parts in um some little um uh, they're going to be uh, measuring tubes aren't they so measuring the air, air velocity or whatever um, so they're going in there, into the, the first stage compressor and the stator fan there. Uh, intake going there, two halves. Be interested to see if we've got ejector pin marks in there. They're going down into the intakes then. And then doing the same again all on the other side. And then we've got these little uh, 
main gear, main gear landing gear down position lock. So this is going to be this little assembly here you're going to build up. So that's quite incredible. This little sort of fairing going on here. We've got the left and the right sides. Then we've got our wheel brakes and all the little actuators that go on the back of the hub there. So you've got weighted or unweighted tyres, so you've got the choice if you want to have it coming into land, you can have them unweighted. If you want it stood on its undercarriage, you can have them weighted. And again, plastic wheels. Yes, thank you, rather than the bloody horrible vinyl tyres. Um, you've got some towing hooks there, or tied down hooks, should I say, not towing hooks. Uh, so even more deep from where we built up the main end undercarriage legs, we've got more detail going in here. And then yet more and more going in with more painting details. And then we've got some stencils to go on there as well. We can see the undercarriage legs are looking amazing. They're going to be painted white, probably white, I think, with a, with a nice wash on them. They're going to really, really pop. And then we've got all the same going on here for the right side. And then looking here, we're onto the... Um, this is adding all the interior detail into the lower fuselage half. So we've got multi-part wheel bay details there. So you're going to have really nice details on the undercarriage bay walls. Um, got some wiring harnesses going in here by the look of things. Absolutely incredible. If you want to see any of this close up, guys, just drop a comment below and I'll uh, do some photos or whatever. Um, so, yeah, uh, more details. This is the arrestor hook mechanism. This is just incredible. Absolutely incredible. And then over the page here, we've got the um, intakes going on there. And then we're stating to the vertical stabilizers, we've got separate rudders, so they're going to be poseable. The main landing gear bays, so we're adding the actual root of the main landing gear in there, so you can build the model without having legs hanging out of it, which is a nice touch. And also notice, although we've built up the nose gear bay, uh, the nose gear leg, we haven't actually added it. We don't have to add it until the model's completed, so that's a nice touch. And again, same on the other side, and you can see all this beautiful pipe work here which is going in it's just incredible um, and then more and more details with more pipes and everything with all the painting codes I mean they're telling you the colors of absolutely everything when you look at like trumpeter and hobby boss they don't tell you the color of anything <laughs> these guys are telling you you know even the colors of the painted bands on the bloody hoses it's quite incredible <laughs> this is amazing um, Got some flaps here. There, these flap assemblies are quite amazing. You got the uh, the P going on the ends there. So this is going to be flaps down. I'm guessing. I'm assuming they're not play withable or, or articulative or articulable, whatever the word I'm looking for. But um, I'm assuming they're not. But uh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely stunning. I've got some photos I'll put up um, that I've got from the internet of these actual built up from a test shop. So you can see flaps assembly, right one, you've got more, more of the same going on here. Absolutely amazing. And then again, you've got all these little um, end plates going in with PE. And you're not going to glue these little pivots, so maybe they are actually workable. Oh my god. be interesting to see how good they are. And then flap assembly, right two. So this is obviously the second stage flap now going on. So you can see we've got it all hanging out like a Bose 747. And you can see that I'll give you a close up. You can see there, that's what you're actually working towards, this double drop-down flap, which is a nice touch. And then here we've got ailerons, I'm looking. Yeah, this is the folded wings. So, fold wings assembly left, and then, so we've got separate slats, and we've got separate ailerons. That may well be a flap there, an aileron on the end. And then we've got all these panels in here, and they're telling you all to paint them different colours. You got this piece going in here. It's um, so this is folded wings assembly right, wing assembly left. All this detail is just incredible, guys. Um, what I don't understand here is where it's telling us what is folded and what is actually down, but we'll probably come to that. So we're adding some detail here into the upper fuselage, and then we're going to got the head up display here. Uh, refueling probe there, which was particular to the 33, the 27 didn't have it, I believe. Um, we've got this little box here with the cabling come out of the back of it. You're folding up your your, H, your head ups display, and then more and more bits and pieces. So this is SVP 2433. I think that's the later fly-by-wire um, system they put in, or um, something to do with um, the controls of it anyway. Uh, so we've got having the canopy attached open, 
you've got all this detail going underneath my god look at this this is better than a 30 second scale kit it's just incredible um i hope they do a 30 second scale kit of this because it would be quite amazing uh, but then again, as I say with reviews, we're looking at all this, we're saying all this is amazing. We've got all these fantastic colour call-outs, we've got all these fantastic little bits and pieces. You know, if the sprue connection points are huge and there's flash everywhere and nothing fits, then it's a total nightmare. So, um, you know, we have to pay your money, take your choice and see what it's like when it goes together. So we've got some PE going in there and then some more bits and pieces going in here. All this underneath the uh, canopy, top of the ejection seat rail there. Mental, absolutely mental. And then we've got the canopy closed here, so obviously we're not going to be adding lots of stuff if we have it closed. And then we're dropping the cockpit up into the um, upper fuselage half. And then it's telling us to cut the shaded portion. Mm, that's interesting. And then we're going to do some more cutting here. We've got some more pipework going in and that seat going in again. So this is with the canopy closed. Previously it was with the canopy open. Wing fold assembly, just look at all these little parts. You've got the plastic panel there going in the end of the wing. And then we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight parts going in. Uh, sorry, nine parts going in. And then you've got all the different colour call X again. And then we've got all this P going in here. The detail on those wings, you'd be, you'd be mad not to build this with a wing, at least one wing folded. Um, not sure if you can actually physically have one wing folded. I don't know if the aircraft would allow you to do that unless it's broken. Um, let me know in the comments below. But there we go. And then more and more P going in. We're still working on the wing folds here. And then folded horizontal stabiliser. So there we go. So that's unfolded. So basically that's pretty straightforward. It's going to be like that if it's folded. Like that if it's not. So not a lot of detail in there to look at. Exhaust nozzles. So we've got our flame rings in here. Um, and then we've got the actual turkey feathers there. I'm not sure if the 33 had the had the vectoring nozzles, I'm not sure. Um, so we've got closed nozzles there, open nozzles there. You'd have to go for open, wouldn't you? Um, and then you add the nose landing gear, which is a bit of a strange stage to do it in. But uh, I guess you do all this and then you do that afterwards. So you've got all your flaps and everything going in here. So you've got the choice of A or C, so we'll have to look back in instructions and see what it is you're building. So obviously they're not all playable with or positionable. And then you've got the canards there which are positionable, which is nice. And then the upper fuselage is going on. So you're going to trap in your flaps, your stabilators and your canards all in one and glue it all together and hide the seams. That's going to be fun. So moving forward here, we've got a movable wing leading edge. So we've got the flaps, we've got the slats there um, to retract the flaps, to extend the flaps. I'm not quite sure what they're saying there. And then <clears throat> central tail boom. This is a stinger tail here. It's got some detail going on there and there's going to be some detail inside. So if it's folded, uh, you've got some detail in there. If it's unfolded, you've got nothing going in there at all. Air brake open, air brake closed. Again, we've got detail going in there. So um, very, very nice touch. It would be nice to display this with the wings folded, everything open, and have all the detail on show. Um, and there's the uh, tail going on there. So you've got your choice if you're open to closed nozzles. Tail's going on there. Wings going on, the external wings going on here. So this is the wings unfolded. Okay, and then you're going to attach your main gear and everything and your arrestor hook in there. More PE parts to go in. Tiny, tiny parts. And then this is going to be landing gear doors. Again, with lots and lots of detail in there with actuators and stuff and all the panel detail inside. Um, same there for the other side. We're going to add all those doors on. And then we've got folded wings. So at some point in the back of that instructions, it will be telling you to build these wings in either folded or unfolded. So they're not positionable, but they are actually, um, you, can, you can choose which to position to have them in. And you get all this beautiful detail here if you do decide to have them uh, folded. And then you've got some lovely PE parts here, they're giving you all the folded dimensions. And what is a really nice touch there, I'll just show you that close up, I wish more manufacturers would do this. They're showing you the flat piece of PE, telling you to fold it, but then they're showing you how it's folded. So that's how it should look. So rather than just a, an image or something, or just a picture of it on there, and you've got to work it out. Again, they've done the same down here. 
Uh, right, so we've got the ejection seat going in. Pitot tube going on, or some sort of airspeed indicator or something going on there. You've got the pitot for the nose here, and giving you all the, the different um, colours there. And you've got the choice of uh, folded. So you can have a folded folded pitot or unfolded. So um, that's for when it gets snapped off, you glue it back on like that. Um, so we have all sorts of antenna and stuff going on here. Lots of different bits of, bits of detail. And then we've got the boarding ladder there, which is made up of these steps sandwiched in between the side pieces. I, I thought they would have been photo etched, but they're not. Um, and then we've got here, now we're doing our pylons. We've got selection of pylons there. And then we've got all the pylons going in here. And then we've got our weapons. And the weapons are a work of art. So you've got all the different um, combinations there of all your um, all your loadouts. So you could load this right out and have it folded just for because you can. It probably wouldn't be loaded out and folded but uh, in real life, but hey. Stencils. Now, I love stencil decals, but they drove me crazy doing them, but there you go. So that's the, um, that's the, <laughs> this is just, this isn't options, this is actual one aircraft, but they couldn't get all the numbers into one, onto one page. So you've got those and those, then you've got those and 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 those. And then you've got all these, and then you've got all these for your weapons. So there's your stencils for your for your weapons there, okay, and pylons. There's your stencils for your underside. There's your more more stencils for the um, engine intakes. Then we've got stencils here for the sides, stencils for our tails, and then upper surfaces there. So I've got those how many there are. I'm not going to count them. And then we've got instrument panel decals there, which is a nice touch. And then we've got colour callouts here, which is the same as goes along with this, I'm guessing. So we've got the red 68. So that's the, the decals going on that one. Your Scottish flags. Um, you got your um yeah, your red 68 there, then you've got your red 80. So not a lot of difference to be honest. But the weathering options you've got with this, you're just amazing. I'll put up a photograph, you, you can see what, with all the back here, you can um, you can really weather it to hell. And then here's um, Red 86. So again, all very, very similar. I have a feeling they are the same camouflage. No, they are not. Their camouflage differs. So you can see here, you've got a difference in the shapes here. So... You need to be very careful with your camouflage and what you're doing. You can see, you look at that area there, and then look at that area there, it's different. So, uh, and then this one's different again. So, um, if they've done their research and this is correct, then you need to follow this religiously. Um, I always thought that maybe the Russians would have the same as everyone else, and they'd have sort of stenciled camouflage. So there we go. And then there's your um, parts list. You can see you've got three decal sheets. We've got three PE sheets and a multitude of sprues over here. So um, it's telling here, adult supervisors should also read instructions when assembled by child aged 14 years or younger. This is not a model for a 14 year old, um, I would say. And it's also not a model for beginners. This would drive you up around the, around the twist. So that's the instructions looked at. These are the, we've seen the colour call out. So that's such separate little additional sheet there. I'm guessing it's some kind of addendum. Um, I'm guessing. But as I say, if I assume it makes an ass of you and me, doesn't it? So that's the instructions looked at. So we've got the photo etch here. I'm not going to get these out because the bags are all sealed up. But um, yeah, I will get them out actually. Let's take that one off of there. Look, I'm not going to remove them from the film. So this is your first photo etch sheet. We can see on there we've got, again, it's very difficult to film photo etch. But we've got the, um, there's your head-up display over here. Lots and lots of little bits of green bleeds. You've got the um, flame-out rings or whatever you call them for the engines there. Lots and lots of uh, little brackets and bits and pieces. Details there for the um, 
with the pylons by the look of it. It looks like if you have your pylons and no weapons, you also still get the details on the surface, which is a nice touch. A lot of kit manufacturers don't do that. So that's that sheet there. And then this one here is going to be all the harnesses and everything. Got some levers there for the cockpit. So it looks like this is mainly harness and cockpit. That's all very nice. Um, it's fairly thickish with the plastic sheet on it. It is 0 0.32, so I'm guessing it's going to be 0 0.28 thou thick. Uh, that one's 0 0.27, so I'm guessing that one's going to be the same eight thou thick. That was put forth. So this is a thicker sheet here, and this is um, little sort of tie down loops and stuff by the look of it. So nice to see they've made three separate sheets in three different thicknesses um, rather than just have one sheet. As I said at the beginning, this, this kit, I don't think you need anything. Uh, we've got some decals here. It looks like there's some addendums here, some decals. And there's that black thing there. I haven't got a clue what that is. It looks like it's a piece of, it's a piece of metal. <laughs> um, not exactly sure what it is, but I'm sure if we look through the instructions again, we'll find it. And again, we've got that beautiful metal pito tube there. So yeah, all very nice indeed. And then let's have a look at the decals before we uh, put them away. So nice to see the nice sealed bags so we can get them out. So let's do A, B, C. So this one is A. Artwork designed by Galaxy Decals and they've got mini base on there. So not exactly sure they're going to be made by. They look to be quite thick. Um, but they have no real carrier film around the edges of the stars. But there is carrier film between these numbers, obviously. So we can see here. If I can get it in the light, I can show you that they are actually. There we go. You can see they're quite thick. They are fairly glossy as well. I'm not sure how they'll go down. I would suggest once you decide which version you're going to make, um, perhaps if you're not going to use Red 80, say, cut that one out, try it on a scrap kit that's got some paint on it and see how they go down. They look quite thick. It looks like they may you may have trouble getting them to go down to the river detail and stuff. That being the case, I would suggest aftermarket because um, when you see the surface detail on this, you don't want to be hiding that with, uh, with cheap decals. So got some beautiful, they're all beautifully printed, beautiful colours and lovely register. They even go to the trouble of the different tones there and the different reds. But, um, beautifully done. Really, really nice. And then this one is B. This is the bigger sheet and this is our lot of stencil detail here. So get you close up. So this is all common stencil detail here. Got some silver ones there. And then we've got the decals for the inter. It's nice that they've actually um, got them all segregated. Cockpit inside, ejection seat, nose gear bay, intake, landing here. You can see there's just hundreds of them. You have a field day. Now these don't look to be as thick, but um, be interesting to see how they go down. And then finally, we got sheet C. You know, I mean, this this decal set would be twenty quid probably. So you know, it's not it's not that much money for this kit. Again, more stencil data. And this is for all the weapons by the look of things. Oh my god. This is interesting, they put the instrument panels in with the weapons. So you would have thought they'd have had the weapons separately so they could use this on other kits, wouldn't you? There we go. Very nice indeed. So we've had a look at that, had a look at our decals. Let's have a look at some plastic. Okay, I'm going to do this review in, in stages because there's so many sprues. I want to make sure everything goes back in the bags properly. 
Um, so I'm going to do this in stages, sort of four sprues at a time, and then I'll pause and then come back. So first of all, we've got our main airframe to look at, and first impressions, it's stunning. Um, the plastic feels lovely. It's not soft like Airfix. It's not hard like Hasegawa. Um, it's more heading towards it's, it's more heading towards Hasegawa, uh, but yeah, it's very much um, sort of AMK like the plastic. Now in Bear's um, review, he mentioned he thought it had links to AMK or or Great Wall Hobby. To me, it kind of shouts out Bronco Great Wall Hobby, um, you know. But they probably all use the same sort of software and for their instruction manuals and stuff so I guess their kits are going to look the same and if you know if you're building a beautiful accurate plastic kit of a subject you know if your if your surface detail is awesome and accurate then to all intents and purposes all the kits should be the same so if everybody made a perfect model of a you know a v12 engine that goes in a russian tank then all of the kits would be exactly the same do you see what i'm saying so it, it, to me it's it's got great wall hobby written all over it um or bronco so you've got the main upper fuselage half and then we've got some um doors and everything here undercarriage doors and there's our canards there um and that's going to be more doors there so we've got all the detail here around the edge and you can see we've actually got the lip of the cockpit is molded into the upper fuselage there with the detail on there which is a nice touch rather than having just a, a flat face and the surface detail on here we've got raised and um, recessed detailing and I will show you close up in a second there is a slight sink mark here but honestly it's not it's nothing to worry about because it's on a panel it's because of this here so hence we'll probably have one here as well but really I mean if you're going to start picking at stuff like that then no, it's it's on a panel, which is nice, and because it's a Russian aircraft, you know it's going to lend itself to having uneven surfaces and stuff. But um, you know it's 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 beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. Now let me give you let me give you a close up of this because after all, this is probably one of the most important parts of the model. So you've got all this beautiful detail here down the sides. Just move the light away, we might get a better image of it. You can see that rivet detail down there, we've got the vent detail there around the gun. You've got all this lovely detail. You can see that there's that sink mark I'm talking about, it's here, but it's like you know, it's very, very slight. And then we've got all the lovely panel and rivet detail on here. You can see all that detail in there, you've got the rivets. In there you can see now in the light as for accuracy I don't know it's not my subject but um look at the detail on there really really nice and then you got all the the hinge detail there for the folding wing on the ends and that carries on into the underside as well and then you've got these gear doors here on the outside. Canards there with the, the stunning rivet detail on there. All gear door and on the inside of the gear doors we've got all the detail. This one will be easy to show you actually. All the detail there with all the rivets, no ejector pin marks. Absolutely beautiful. Again, same rivet detail on the canards. And then going into our doors there. Absolutely stunning. I think that's raised here. Yeah, that's raised river detail on there So it's um, it's accurate to scale Beautiful and then we've got here. We've got the obviously the underside of the fuselage So looking at this one here, we've got the the tips of the stabilators here and then this is going to be the inner end of the stabilators uh, we've got the is that tips of the tails there um, nose gear door by the look of it and then some more panels here but on the lower half of the fuselage we again we've got this absolutely stunning river detail these are st amazing stiffening plates 
the plumbing and everything inside the um, undercarriage bay there is just, I don't know, it's just, the, it's beautiful, it is stunning. Did, did, did I say it was stunning? The hinge detail on these panels is lovely. So I'll give you again a close up. We've got a slight mark there where we've got a, that's been pulled out of the mould tool and it's slightly weakened the plastic. But again, you know, it's it's not, I can catch it in the light, it's not actually affected the surface, it's just a mark. So um, again, we can see all this beautiful panel and rivet detail here. But just look at this undercarriage bay. It's um, stunning and that stiffener there is just gorgeous. You can imagine this with a wash and some oil streaks and chipping and, and stuff. It's just, oh, it's just beautiful. Look at it. Look at the deep. It's just absolutely, and they're one piece. Of, oh, look at this. They're not even in two halves. Look at this. It's absolutely beautiful. Even if you're not into Russian aircraft, you'd have to want to build this. It is just beautiful. It's unbelievable. I mean, as, as I said, I saw the uh, review of it yesterday and, and was stunned. In the flesh, it's even better than, than what you're seeing on the camera, believe me. Okay, so we've got another sprue here. This is sprue E. It's got our intake halves here. Uh, this is going to be the other parts of the undercarriage bays by the look of it. Air brake. Uh, this is going to be the part that goes inside the canopy. Internals of the air brake front undercarriage bay I guess that's part of the intakes there um, stabilizers or, or sorry tails here um, and then we've got some parts for the uh, wings there by the look of it this looks like the interior walls for the undercarriage bay some more rivet detailed parts whatever they are part of the fuse and the part of the cockpit some more little doors and everything there's those flares that go around the undercarriage bay uh, and rear undercarriage and the frame there for the canopy. Um, that's going to be the actuator for the air brake. Right, so let's get a close up on there. First things first, are there going to be ejector pin marks on the inside of these intakes? What do you reckon? One, two, three. Yes. <laughs> there we go. Always has to be a little let down, doesn't there? But hey, not going to worry about that. The beauty of it is, though, Yes, they are there, and they are all slightly raised. So they can be sanded out. We don't have to get in there with filler and stuff. We just get in there with a sanding stick and sand them away. Yay! So, yeah. I guess they have to have them there because of the shape. I mean, you've got these nearly vertical sides here. They've got to press it out at all. If they didn't, they would probably be misshapen because um, they wouldn't want to come out of the tool. If you just push them out with the sprues, it would be difficult. If they were more sort of oval shaped, they'd want to come out. You know, like they haven't got, I'm saying that they have got ejector pin marks on there. Um, they haven't got any on the inside of there. But if they were sort of rounder, they, they'd want to come out of the tool. But you can see these sides, they almost don't want to come out. So, um, unfortunate, but hey, I'm not going to make too much fuss about that. Uh, and then we've got on this side here, we've got all the detail, these absolutely stunning vertical stabilizers. Um, but the finesse of some of these parts is just, you know, I'll go from the top corner. There's, there's those fairings. And then we move along here to the vertical stabilizers again with all these panels and rivets. And if you notice as well, there's no flash anywhere. There's your nose gear bay. Some lovely detail in there. These are parts of the intakes. There's the interior of your air brake. There's your exterior of your air brake. Piece for the canopy. Not sure what this is, but it's, uh, it's lovely anyway, it's beautiful. Parts of the undercarriage bays where the wheel recesses are. And we've got the side walls of the front undercarriage bay. Look at that. 
ضحكوا There's the consoles for the um, the cockpit. And then finally for this segment, here's the um this looks like the tips of the wings, tips of the main wings. And and we've got some flaps here, ailerons, bits and pieces of control surfaces. Oh my god, look at the detail on that. And we've got our wing folds here. And then we've got the slats here by the look of it. Oh my god. Which you see this. Right. Let's start up here. Wing tips. It's getting boring now, all this beautiful surface detail. There's your wing tips there, folding wings. Look at the detail on there. And then we've got the leading edge slats here. Again with all that beautiful rivet detail and they're actually slide molded so they're hollow so you've got this great solid chunk of plastic to deal with again more surface detail on that wing and then just look at these wing folds it's just incredible guys flaps ailerons I think or flaps actuators on there look just hanging on by sheer sheer luck nothing much to see on the back side we got the um, other side of the slats there you can see the rivet detail it's all um it's all recess rivet detail which is actually not probably correct but as it's a Russian aircraft you give it a wash it's going to make it look amazing okay so I'm going to get those bagged up I'll get some more unbagged and then I'll be back all right then guys if you want to go to the loo or anything go now we'll have a <laughs> have an interval go make up a tea or something because what you're about to see is going to impress you mm. if you're not impressed already you soon will be right so Some of these sprues we have two of, uh, and this is one of them. So this is sprue G, and we have two of these. And as we can see, we've got some beautiful pylons on here. We've got our arrestor hook there. That's interesting. Do Are these actually the same? Yes, they are. Um, so we've got our wheels here. We've got our compressor uh, first stage and our stator there. We've got some, um, I'm, I'm assuming that's going to be the exhaust turbine there. And then we've got some exhaust pipes here with the inter all the internal detail in them. Closed nozzles, open nozzles, and then these are going to be the interior in insets for our um, vertical stabilizers. Flame ring there. Um, I'm guessing that's going to be part of the rudder, or it might be part might be an aileron. Um, but all these different parts here all going together, and what I can show you on here is absolutely well. It's just it's just amazing. Right, so let's go around the sprue. So we've got our arrestor hook here, and as you can see, slide molded, so we've got detail on all sides. Just look at the detail on the back end of it there. Really, really nice. I'm assuming that's the arrestor hook. And then we've got a pylon here, again. Beautifully detailed, and then you got our um, insert there for the uh, for the vertical stabilizers. Again, this is this is going to be. I'm not sure if it's part of the rudder or if it's going to be the. Um, I'm sure it's part of the rudder. And then here we've got some vents there for the for the intakes. Another part for the intakes there. Nose wheel tires. Um, there's a plastic pitot tube, and there's the folded plastic pitot tube and you've got another insert there look around here we've got the um the closed exhaust nozzles and then we've got the wheels and tires i'm going to come back to them in a minute you've got the stator there which is beautiful you all the detail around the hub there if you look more tires turbines exhaust with interior detail Okay, looking lovely. Open nozzles. It's 
so that's obviously going to go up inside here somehow but uh, yeah and then you can see on the inside detail on the inside of them is, is incredible and again in here detail on the inside absolutely beautiful but what I wanted to show you because there's vents on there there's the panel there is beautiful it's all open and the detail on that is quite nice as well um, these tires not only have we got plastic tires that are weighted but just feast run the details we've got the ribbing on the tires we've got the lettering on the tires you've got all you could ever want and those plastic wheels are gorgeous and then on the nose wheel you've got all the detail on there and then again there you've got the lettering and everything only on one side absolutely beautiful really really nice so uh, this is the one that came on the cardboard protector obviously because there's a lot of very flimsy little parts on here um, and as you can see we start off we've got a one piece nose which I'm hoping is the right shape uh, something that a lot of Asian manufacturers don't seem to manage on jet aircraft um, we've got our these are pods here and they are molded in one piece so there's no seam lines or anything to worry about we have a seam line to sand but you haven't got any glued seam lines there's the tail there which is foldable some little bits and pieces some pipe work uh, that's the um, forward looking thingy me jig the actual crew ladder there some wheel hub detail um, that's the nose gear there by the look of it and then we've got some flaps or bits and pieces and parts of the wing folding mechanism some more bits and pieces there and on the end here we've got our main gear which again is slide molded so it's hollow so let's show you this so you've got the main gear there and you can see it's beautifully detailed hollowed end so it's going to be nice and strong you don't need any metal landing gear on this and then there's the um, this is the part that goes up into the fuselage so that's your main landing gear then and then that's going to pop up onto those pegs that are sticking out so it's going to be nice and strong um, instrument panels there the detail on them quite stunning there's that bulkhead there with all that cable pipe work and everything on it cockpit there with the some bits and pieces in the floor detail but nothing much Beautiful ladder, wheel brake details, nose gear, again more lovely riveting detail. And those panels, very difficult to catch in the light because it's so faint and to scale very careful these gloves on they catch everything and there we go and our nose there the access detail on the top and then we've got some access detail on the sides as well I'm not sure if that's a mold line around there if it's supposed to be there if you can let me know in the comments I'd be interested not sure if that's a mould line. I think it's a mould line, isn't it? And you've got the, the stinger tail there. Very, very lovely. Right. Here we've got the intakes. And these, again, these come on a cardboard backing to, uh, to support them. But if you look at these on the sides, this is where you're looking for that beautiful rivet detail that Trumpeter originally missed. You can see it's there in all its glory and those vents there. Grilled areas. All that rivet detail and panel detail in there. No mould seams. Again, 
and all that lovely detail there, look. Look the same on the inside faces of them. Very, very nice indeed. Now, uh, this sprue here, we're moving on to little tiny bits and pieces now. This is sprue L, and um, this has got some absolutely tiny parts on it. You can see here we've got one, and it goes down to 92. So, look at all those parts on there. So, we just quickly look around it. This is all sorts of um, bits and pieces. I'm guessing, because there's so many of these, I'm guessing these are going to be something to do with weapons. You've got some kind of pito there, some kind of actuator. Looks like that's the uh, control yoke. More actuators. More pitos. Absolutely tiny. Look at them. Absolutely minuscule. There we go, those parts of the seat there. Back of the seat by the look of it. Some pipes. Looks like the sides of the seat there. I'm not sure what details on the inside. Nothing much. There's the external details of the seat. Oleos. Beautiful, beautifully done. And then we come along here. We've got a. This is going to be a pylon sprue. This is sprue M, and this is all pylons. We actually get two of these, so uh, lots and lots of bits in there. And this is going up to twenty six. So there's not that many parts on this one. But um, just show the detail on the pylons. You know, if someone could bring out a 70 second scale B52 with this kind of detail, it would be so nice. And you can see there, they're just... I can't keep saying, look at the surface detail, look at the beautiful surface detail. It's, uh, it's just incredible. And they are in halves, these. Now these are solids. They're solid, so that's nice to see. Uh, but the rest of the pylons look as though they're pretty much in halves. So those down at the end there, and these two here, they're solids. So uh, that's that one. And then our penultimate sprue, I think, is this. Little, oh no, we've got some little ones to go through, haven't we? Wherever they are. Where did I put them? Oh, there they are. So we've got some uh, more greeblies here, you get two of these. So this is, this is going from 1 to 130. <laughs> so there's uh, 130 parts on here. And it's lots and lots of little pipes and bits and pieces and greeblies and God knows what. But uh, I'll give you a close up. This is some sort of um, arm there with a shroud around it, a gator around it. Some actuators there. It's just, uh, it's, it's lovely, isn't it? Again, as I say, it, it depends how it all goes together. Look at those tiny, tiny parts there. It's part of the undercarriage legs there. Pipe work. I haven't had a chance to check out what the mould seams are like. They're not bad. There's obviously going to be a seam there. You, you, you can't avoid it. Unless you do what Tammy do and uh, laser, laser it away. Yeah. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Now this is an interesting one because I looked at these two. These are bagged together. 
these two sprues are back together and I thought they're um, they're the same but they're actually not but they're both D you see this one's got the D up in the corner and this one's got D there so they're they're nearly mirrored sprues in fact you know people use the terminology mirrored sprues and they're not the same uh, these are actually mirrored sprues almost except for that bit on the end there so uh, these are obviously going to be your lefts and rights but um you see got some cabling detail on there which is gorgeous more rivet detail on these panels here and the carriage bays all the pipe work and everything and then the same on this one but with actuators on the end instead of those two panels and then finally you'll be pleased to know we can have a look at the clear parts now again these come on a on a cardboard protector which is nicely thought out so we've got two different canopies here I'm not quite sure why we've got two um, it could be that one is open one is closed I can't see any real difference in them they're both number no one is this one is seven and eight and this one is eight and nine so it looks like the fronts are the same but the rears are different so I'm assuming that one is open and one is closed but it looks like with the fronts you can use either but they have got a not sure if they've got a seam on them or not there's some dust on them No, there isn't a seam there, I don't think. There's something on the on the on the windscreen. Yeah, there's a seam there. And there's the tiniest of seams on the actual yeah, there is a seam on there. So let's have a close look up at these. You can see the reflection of the uh, light in there. Um let me grab something with writing on it. What have I got here with writing on it? Here's my no, I can't show you that because it's got my address on it. Windsor and Newton ink. Here we go. We can look through there and we can see the distortion, and it's not too bad at all. Obviously, by its very shape, it's going to be um, it's going to give you distortion, but. Uh, Well, that one appears to be better and well, that one's certainly better yeah that that one is certainly a lot better than that one but they are crystal clear very very sharp and they do have if I can get it in the light I don't think I'm going to be able to yeah you can see there is a seam very very faint scene down there which is going to need sanding out that's you know that's nothing and then we've got some beautiful little dome parts there for the forward looking thing and then your head up display very very nice indeed so there we go i have just remembered there's one more thing i've got to show you and uh it's impressive <laughs> 